Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Show Fury Three Three with another exhibition match, a bit more tutorializing kind of match this time because we are going to have Six Pairs of Feet versus Dinefriend, and it's this is actually about a month old game, but Six Pairs of Feet pointed it out as a game with more even LO than the last one, and also weekday casts are the ones where I tend to do tutorial matches as opposed to Saturday casts where I will pretty much try to focus entirely on high level play because that's more of the everyone watches for entertainment cast, whereas the weekday cast is more, well, okay, I suppose people watch it for entertainment too, but that I feel, just because it's not as big, I don't know, maybe I should be doing the tutorial games in the bigger cast. I really have a lot of I, things I could do with the format, so honestly, I'm not sure what works best. But, this will be more of a tutorial style game, however, we'll be on Deadlands, which means it's also going to be hard to actually really be a good tutorial kind of thing, so whatever. It's... Like I said, six pairs of viewers of Dying Throne and let's get started. So Dying Throne starting out in the southwest corner of the map, going for Kulgabot Factory. And six pairs of feet going for Kulgabot Factory. And going well, not a bad start there. Yeah, two metal, then four and actually I think three power would probably be enough. Yeah, three two actually. No, two power. Two metal, two power, metal, and then more power. Just because that gives you ten and ten really quickly. Whereas two four one is that was last two are kind of wasted. I mean, you don't stall, but you're also not at 10 metal. You need to have three to get a 10 metal, except, yeah, Deadlands is too pretty standard. So yeah, Deadlands we have seen before, and it point out the center of the map is only three metal in total. So primarily the important thing is the sides, especially this ring. The ring near the center is fairly important. The sides are also fairly important. But yeah, this map is not one where territory control is of great importance. I mean, really, you can get, you can get pretty much this and this and this, without much effort. And same with the south player can get the south side. The, what you can get is fairly straightforward without putting much effort in. Although six pairs of feet is pushing out pretty quickly with you, with the glaives, taking the center at least to the radar tower, which is not a bad use of the center. Definitely worthwhile there. While dying front, on the other hand, just point out what they're doing. They, actually, haven't even built a third metal extractor yet. So neither six pairs of feet, but Dying Throne a bit more focused on energy, even more focused on energy than six pairs of feet is. They aren't quickly focusing on the 10 and 10, which is very surprising, which I should say 10 metal, 10 energy, which is when one factory can produce at full speed. So right now, neither player has a full speed producing factory, though Dying Throne is slightly closer. Though biggest advantage Dying Throne has is this warrior here. That warrior, that is huge, because that means the Glaze can't just rush in. It also means that Dying Throne could attack whenever they want to. However, right now, Six Pairs of Feet is much more focused on using these Glaives just for a tiny bit of pressure. Well, six, well Dying Throne is going for straight raiding. Not even for pressure, just raiding it out. And now Six Pairs of Feet going over to the northwest side. Now, at this point, the Warrior could move over, and Six Pairs of Feet realizes Dying Throne was bluffing up. Bear in mind, Dying Throne can, can't see what Six Pairs of Feet is really up to. Six pairs of feet, on the other hand, is much more lucky. They actually can see pretty much everything that Dying Freund's up to for aggression. So six pairs of feet can respond to that. Dying Freund was apparently just checking... I'm not sure if they're bluffing or not. They might have been thinking and then changing it up. That looked like a possible bluff, assuming that radar existed in the center. So I could kind of see that, but I think Dying Freund might not have been thinking that far ahead. I'm not sure. I kind of wish they were watching the stream right now so I would know. Yeah, six pairs of feet even more consolidating in the center. And Dying Throne pushing out forward, a bit surprising though, they, like, Six Pairs of Feet is, at least, their their plan was more defensive. Right now, their commander is moving out far more forward. They don't have another Rector going over to the northwest, because right now, the entire north side is theirs. And like I said before, it's pretty much theirs to begin with, but right now it's definitely theirs. There isn't much pressure. The two warriors could push in if they wanted to, but Dying Throne is sort of harassing a bit weakly on the side. We are going to see a slight fight between the Glaives and the... Well, Glaives for both, but Dying Throne has twice the number of Glaives as Six Pairs of Feet. Massive local advantage right here, too, so Six Pairs of Feet has no chance there. Right now, Six Pairs of Feet more focused on stopping the Warriors, which is going to work out very well. The Warriors are going to have very little chance. They will get rid of the Rector, though. That's a good kill. Might not be worth two Warriors, though. One Warrior would have been worth it. Two Warriors is a little bit much. Though it gets rid of the Radar, too. That's also very important. Doesn't get rid of the Defenders, though, so the Glaives cannot rush in afterwards. But the Glaives are in a nice position to go for a counterattack once Six Pairs of Feet moves out. These Glaives could just rush right in. Six Pairs of Feet has no defenses in their main base. Dying Throne, I should point out, actually doesn't either. Everything's in the center of the map. These three these three defenders, that's the center. 
These glaives, whenever six spirit of feet is confident, not sure if they're gonna move in though. Dying throwing sorry, dying throwing's confident. Six spirit of feet has a warrior in position. So six spirit of feet keeping that in a good spot. And actually the warrior will be coming in handy quite soon. About half the glaives will go go through there. Should be able to kill one of the metal extractors. The Rockos will try to help out, but yeah, the south half, or sorry, the east half of the glaives will get away from that warrior and will be able to kill a metal extractor, possibly two, depending on how they position themselves. They go around this side, if they go here, then yes, two metal extractors, I don't think three though. No, yes, it will be three, wow, the forces don't even get behind in time, so all main base metal extractors down, six pairs of feet, barely defending the center, loses the defender as well, and finally gets rid of the glaives in the main base, but six pairs of feet lost a lot from that. And Dying Throned, on the other hand, Getting a bit in the center, but still six pairs of feet does have a bit of a territory advantage. And they can re they have to rebuild these here, yes, but they still have the north side pretty much there, at least the north center. They could fairly easily expand to the northwest. Some static defense or another warrior over here, though. This size of the map, plopping out a warrior like that is not really worth it. Like, putting it out of position, because that warrior where it was, not quite the best spot. A bit further east, like, it was kind of hard to tell, but I think the radar was in place at the time. A bit further east would have saved it. They would have saved the entire base. The warrior would have basically torn apart all the glaives, or all but maybe one or two. It would have been a lot easier to defend. As well as just having a like having a lotus here. This is one of the problems with this arrangement as well. Is you, I suppose you could put a lotus in the center. That should be able to see around, but there's still there's still some spots where it'd be blind. Whereas if these two solar collectors weren't here. A Lotus could be placed here instead, and that would be very difficult to avoid. There'd be a blind spot behind this solar collector, but that would be it. Anyway, the center of the map, we do have... Six pairs of feet is taking the center. I mean, there's a lot of... Okay, getting three extra metal on that, not the biggest deal, not really that worth it, but... They have it, and they are taking the northwest as well, moving a warrior in for defense, which is a really good idea. Although at this point, not the best idea due to the Rockos, but still a pretty good idea. Actually, given the Rockos, some glaives would not be a miss. There are glaives that are coming up for six pairs of feet. They are queued. While Dying Throne has some as well, but Dying Throne's Dying Throne's got the skirmisher advantage. And they're focusing more on skirmishers. Six pairs of feet needs to focus on raiders to get around that. And the warriors, they will go down pretty quickly to the Rockos. But at the same time, two Rockos go down for Dying Throne, and six pairs of feet can easily reclaim this. Like, she's quite a lot of metal. 500 metal right here that's kind of contested. So six pairs of feet could reclaim this and is actually ahead. Needs a bit more energy, but is definitely ahead for metal. Rebuilding that stuff up and dying throwing not I can't even take this outside. Six pairs of feet was exerting pressure along there too. And the warrior's about to pincer in. Now Dying Throne does notice the warrior, but will lose all their glaives of the warrior. Six glaives come in, that's not enough in that position. If they were coming around all at once, it would have been enough, but the way they came in did not work. However, Dying Throne sorry. Six pairs of feet commander go down. Dying for a nice kill there with the two warriors. So six pairs of feet lost their commander, and with that, most of the center of the map is going to go down. Some warriors, oh, sorry, some Rockos are in place. Some Glaze trying to help with that, but nope. That, however, the Rockos do stop, so ultimately Dying Throne cannot push forward that much. At the same time, six pairs of feet going for the counter harass. I should counter assault with the warriors here. Now, warrior to counter from Dying Throne, but six pairs of feet did not get their first shot in there, and that is going to mean that basically going to be even. Both warriors go down, and six pairs of feet also loses their second warrior, so ultimately did not do much damage. Killed a metal extractor, killed a few warriors. I mean, six pairs of feet is ahead economically. That needs to be pointed out. They are ahead economically. They're building up here, getting some extra consolidation here, getting some extra walls around these metal extractors. And, okay, overbuilding lotuses here. That's one here, one here, and maybe one here. And possibly one here. No, actually, yeah, one here. Like That will work. And maybe one in here if you really want to preserve that southwest. That's something that's of great importance. However, Dynefront's commander is about to go down. There's a hammer coming in, as well as a Rocco of the Rocco getting stopped by the Lotus. Not for long, slowed down slightly, but Dynefront's commander bought themselves enough time to escape. Still six pairs of feet ahead economically, not taking the northwest though. Like, that, that warrior should have been followed by a Rector to take the northwest, take all these expansions, and that would have been an extra six metal in six pairs of feet's pocket. And that would have meant. Probably at this point about five rockers instead of three and about four or five glaives instead of one or two. But that is not the case, unfortunately. So six pairs of feet is not as able to deal with these rockers as they would have otherwise been. The hammer helping out, though. It is helping out. The rockers do not have enough speed to easily dodge the hammer projectile. 
but they can still dodge it. And the Glaive coming in around the back should be able to get the weakened one first and does get the weak one first. The other two should go down quickly enough. However, one of the Rockos heavily threatened. More Glaives coming in to deal with this and the Rockos do go down. Same time though, Six Pairs of Feet deals with... Sorry, Dying Throne deals with Six Pairs of Feet Rockos. I don't know why I have them confused. The direction is perfect. Dying Throne's at the bottom, Six Pairs of Feet's at the top. Whatever. Six Pairs of Feet just got such a memorable name, I guess. I don't know what it is. They did, however, lose a center mechs, but this, these mechs are the least valuable. The most valuable mechs here, the two ones at the bottom, those were all preserved. Oops. They were all preserved, and that means six pairs of feet is still ahead economically and has been this entire game. Needs to build a caretaker, though. That's the one big thing. Needs to get a caretaker here just to push that factory. Six pairs of feet is alone in this, though. Dying Freund does not need a caretaker. Dying Freund needs more metal. They could, well, they could actually have taken the southeast quite some time ago, and they could have taken these metal extractors too. It's a bit risky. They might not last for long, but they probably last long enough. As long as they last for about, that's two. They have to last for half a minute. They last for thirty seconds each. They paid for themselves. However, at this point, it is rather contentious. Dying Front's commander being the main defense against the glaives coming around here, and doing a pretty good job of that too. This is a level two commander. Sorry, level one commander. My mistake. But six pairs of feet, yeah, still has a massive advantage here. The military disadvantage here is due to the lack of a commander. Dying Throne's commander is worth 1,400, so really think of this as 1,000 versus 1.6, although Dying Throne's commander is actually fairly forward for a support con. I'm not entirely sure why Dying Throne went for a forward support con like that. If you're going forward, then Battlecom is usually more used, but I think this might have been simply metagame delay. Because, of course, old meta... Like, before 1.2.4, I think. Because this is 1277. I think it was like 1... Actually, it might have been 118. So, quite some time ago, we had the whole thing where commanders became... I think 1.2.3, actually. Commanders became pretty much uniform. Support comms didn't have the plus 4, plus 4. They were plus... Everything's plus 4, plus 6. And I don't think Dying Throne and Six Pairs of you were quite aware of that. So, yeah. Plus 4, plus 6, which is why I mentioned at the beginning of the cast that you want to have three metal and two solar plants right off the bat. That's what you want to have, because, or equivalent cost in wind, because that is what's going to get you to 10-10. However, Dying Front able to now take out the center. Six pairs of feet loses control of the center, but has control over the southeast. Like I said, too many lotuses that are too bunched up. They, like, These two lotuses don't... Or actually, yeah, this one doesn't need to exist. This one doesn't need to exist. This one makes sense. This one kind of makes sense, though it might be excessive. If this one's this one's alone with the other three would be still kind of showing that it was kind of uncertain. But yeah, six pairs of feet is very uncertain about their position in the southeast. However, fairly cocky about the northwest, which I should point out, due to the symmetry of the map, is about as easy to assault as the southeast is. I mean, dying throne is more likely, or no, actually, equally likely to assault either we've seen so far. And dying throne is now taking on the valuable mexes. Some glaives coming in to help defend, but the hammer. Getting heavily attacked. These glaives not able to defend the hammer in time. Dying Freund takes that out. And six pairs of feet trying to counterattack, trying to stop the destruction of the mechs, which will work fairly well due to the solar collectors. The solar collectors working very well as walls. But a warrior stopping the glaives from really dealing with the Rockos applies enough pressure to push them back, though. And these Rockos need to move forward as well. And down goes that metal extractor. Six pairs of feet, however, does have a lot of metal going for them. But Dying Freund has a lot of reclaim going for them. They're taking. Remember that 500 reclaim here? Yeah, well, now it's 1,000 or 1,500 or so, and it's all Dying Throins. All of it. So Dying Throin going to get where they're going to need to get by reclaim, and no caretakers, though. No caretakers for either. Like, six pairs of feet. If more of that, they were building around the map pretty consistently, they would be needing caretakers badly, and they are getting some more conjurers. All right, they're not rectors anymore. What am I saying? They're getting more conjurers, which need to, well, assist the factory helps. But building caretakers is more necessary. Get a couple conjurers to resist the factory, and then have one of them build a caretaker while the rest assist, so you don't run out of metal. I'm sorry, you don't excess metal, I should say. Over Dying Throind, well, not quite got full control of the center, but still pretty close. And to point out, this is a level 2 comm that is upgrading once again. But the warrior just avoiding it. Going around, and Dynefront still has not taken these metal extractors. Now, given the reclaim, that's not terribly surprising, but still has not taken these metal extractors. Six pairs of feet, as a result, doesn't have any harassment targets, but more importantly, Dynefront has not had that economy. They aren't reclaiming as consistently as they could be. Like, the commander's not reclaiming just whenever it gets the chance. Even right, like, now would be a good time to reclaim, but it's not doing so. 
which is a little problematic. Just point out that one of the nice things about this Borkom is the build power. You get plus two build power every level. So that's a lot of reclaim power. There we go. That's that's 19 metal of reclaim right away, and there's nothing to spend it. Like I said, no caretakers. That that's kind of the biggest mistake. I mean, six pairs of feet has been pushing conjurers for pushing the factory. And you can use that. You can do that instead of caretakers. That's perfectly fine. But one way or another, more metal has to be pushed into these factories. Otherwise, accessing is going to happen. Dying Floyd right now does not have any excess troubles, though, because of... I'm not sure why, actually. Why is Dying Floyd not accessing? Oh, right, because of Morph. Yeah, all the excess is going into Morph right now. That's That would make sense. So Dying Floyd's commander... Going for, they're pretty much in a troll comm territory now at level 3. There we go. Double shield with double light particle beam and high frequency beam mod on the light particle beams. So, very battle comm there. But we have sharpshooters, so the counter already exists. Thus, dealing with this is not going to be especially difficult for Dying Flint. And Dying Flint, sorry, for Six Pairs of Feet. And Six Pairs of Feet is getting a character in the center of the map. They do have three Conjurers at the factory, which is good. That's exactly what they need, so that's perfect. Dying Flint, on the other hand, no Conjurers in the factory, and not really going for Reclaim anymore either. All that Reclaim went in the morph, which, while there is the shield there, Sharpshooters, they'll just take it out. I, there's, that's the thing. The Sharpshooter, maybe another Sharpshooter will be coming up as well, but yeah, Six Pairs of Feet is pretty has a nice decentralized army i mean they don't have the commander yes but still they're basically on par with dying Throne's commander in terms of cost while they have the entire map to themselves and dying Throne has not been taking metal extractors has sort of been trying to take the center trying to cut through the center and then sweep from there but has not had really the firepower to actually go from the center cut to the sweep haven't been able to take out the northwest side or the southeast side and at this point six pairs of feet has built a huge amount of defenses there i still think a bit too much but Honestly, it doesn't much matter. These areas are live, pretty much. Hey, they're not going to go down. Okay, this area is not. That area is still could be taken, but this area would be very difficult to push in with what Dying Throne has. And Dying Throne is. Well, they got their shields up. Their main shield is full up. Their personal shield is not full up. But it is still there. And the Rocco is trying to take up with the can. Sharpshooter needs to get into position, and it's on hold. Oh, actually, it doesn't even matter. Just fires right through, and Dying Throne's commander, one more sharpshooter shot will take it out. About, I think, four seconds. Three, two, no, now it's three. Two, one, and there we go. Dying Throne's commander, and thus most of their army cost goes down six pairs of feet, basically takes the match right there, though, admittedly. Dying Throne's commander, I don't know why they went for support comp forward, and honestly, just didn't have the economy. And six pairs of feet, took map control, and they lost the commander early on, but that did not matter. They took map control, they used their economy to really push the factory, and Dying Throne has not done that this entire game. So yeah, Six Pairs of Feet can basically just push in, and Dying Throne hasn't got anything at this point. Six Pairs of Feet can just push right in, and basically s crush everything. Steamroll through, and that'll be it. And actually, yeah, in terms of cost, Conjurers are actually... I think slightly more expensive. Yeah, they are slightly more expensive. It's 280 metal versus 220 metal for a caretaker. However, conjurers are easier to get up because they're still cheaper individually and it's still more granular. You get the plus five rather than have to go every plus 10. Like every plus five metal instead of plus 10 metal. So ultimately, conjurers can work just as well. I mean, in high level play, you see both. Especially shield bot, multiple convicts. Half dozen convicts on the shield bot factory to assist it is very usual at high level play, so it's not really a big difference. The upside, the other upside of conjurers is that they are mobile. Once you get enough of them, you could, like I said, use a couple of them to build a caretaker and then push them out of the way. Right now, this conjurer is moving out. That's kind of demonstrating how the conjurers are very flexible, where caretakers can only assist the factory. They're cheaper, but they can only assist the factory or reclaim if units die, but they can only be where they are built. Whereas conjurers can move around, at any builder can move around where they need to be. But yeah, that's the one thing, is the, the cost, it's a little bit, you're kind of paying a premium on mobility, very small premium, about 60 metal, it's like, for unassisted, that's 6 seconds extra of time. But yeah, unless you have a, if you have a commander, building a caretaker is fine, because it's still 10, second, 10 metal a second, but with conjurers, most builders is 5 metal a second, so it still takes quite a bit longer, it still takes 40 seconds rather than 20, and that... Takes care of the Klugabot factory, and there we go. Dying Throne goes down. Yeah, 
So also should point out that that is, like I said, 22 seconds at 10 metal a second for the caretaker because it does cost 20, it's cost 220. Which also means, because it's 10 metal per second build time, that if you have the metal for it and you need to build a new factory or rebuild a factory, building a caretaker first is what you need to do. Build the caretaker, then build the factory, because what will happen is the caretaker will be built in 20 seconds, if you have 10 metal per second, and then the caretaker will assist the factory, so the factory is built in 30 seconds rather than 60, because all factories have a 600 metal cost, including Strider Hub. They all cost 600 metal, so if you're going to do that, build the caretaker first, that'll drop the build time in total to 50 seconds from 60 seconds, and that extra 10 seconds, especially when you have 20 build power pushing in, could mean you know, a couple extra units, a couple extra Rockos, Actually, two extra Rockos, that could be quite a lot, or just, that gets you a few extra units, which is always good. There's never a reason not to do that. And of course, it also just gives you faster build times. So overall, that's the two extra Rockos in the same time that you just have the factory on its own. But of course, you're at two times normal build speed. So it's huge. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be the game. Sorry, not, not just the game. This is going to be the entire stream. So thank you all for watching. I hope that was helpful. And I hope you enjoyed that. And that is going to be it. So good night, everyone.